MLB The Show's coverage of Major League Baseball is on the air. Should be a good one here this afternoon between the Milwaukee Brewers and the Chicago Cubs. Major League Baseball on the show is next. You Darvish is the man towing the rubber for the Cubs in this one. What's your take on him, Dan? You Darvish is what you look at when you're looking for an ace. Big, strong guy came over from Japan, 95 to 97 miles an hour, all the way back from Tommy John surgery. Has the curveball, the changeup, and the slider. Will throw any pitch at any count. One of the top pitchers in the game, and you'll know early if he's seeing a lot of swings and misses and strikeouts. It's going to be a long day for those guys swinging the bats. The 2-1. Now a swing and a ball popped in the air back behind short. Therefore it is Baez and he's got it for the first down. The center fielder of the fifth. Lorenzo Kane. And in to hit next is Lorenzo Kane. Head to head numbers with you, Darvish. Just a two for 14 line, so advantage pitcher here. He's set. Here comes the 1 1. Hit on the ground down the first baseline. But this will get foul. It's a ball and two strikes. Very nice afternoon. High skies and 77 degrees at game time. The one two fouled off. He got a mistake right there but missed it. Can't foul that pitch off in a big spot. 0 2 count heater caught too much of the zone. Swing and a ball hit out toward right center. Center fielder giving chase. He's got it. A nice play there. Two away. Third. In is Christian Yelich. Right He's a dangerous Christian. hitter indeed as the Yelich. reigning batting champion in the National League. Now the three and two pitch. And we'll have the first base runner of the ball game here as that misses and it's a two out walk. Well, the reason power hitters generally draw more walks than other guys is exactly what we saw right there. Pitchers work around them and nibble the corners a lot more so they don't get burned. He made some good pitches, but he just couldn't get him to chase enough out of the zone. So we're runner at first here with two gone in the inning. And in at the plate steps Keston Hura. Here's the one and one pitch. A ball and two strikes now. Throw over to the bag and a dive, but he's back in. Strike three called, and the inning is over. Milwaukee leaves one. Now the Cubbies will get their first crack. No score. Brandon Woodruff, the Mississippi native, will be on the mound in this one. Dan, any thoughts? Hey, this guy has a four-pitch repertoire, right? And those are a lot of nice options to have. You can go hard soft. You can go in and out. And any time you have four pitches, if you can throw them for strikes, you have the big advantage. Digging in, Chris Bryant. He'll lead things off here in the bottom half of the first. ball out to right field. Yelich is after it. He gets there and makes the play for the first out. Batting second, the first baseman, Anthony 
So one away here with the bases empty and into bat next the left handed hitting first baseman Anthony Rizzo. Bases are empty one man out. And he missed with it here so now it's a full count three and two. To be honest with you, I'm a little bit more afraid of the guy on deck than the guy that's up right now. If I'm on the mound, I want this guy up right now. He's the guy that's got to beat me. And he missed with that one. It's ball four. A one-out walk here in the home first. Well, when you go with the slider there in a full count, you're hoping that the hitter is thinking fastball and swings through it. Didn't work out that way, though. He lays off and gets the free pass. The next hub up, Javier Baez. Rizzo leads off first with one away. Hit the other way out toward right field. After it is Yelich. He gets there and makes the play for the second out of the inning. So it's a runner at first with two gone. And that'll bring up the left-handed hitting Kyle Schwarber. The 2-1 hit sharply on the ground and he'll go the short way to retire the side. Cubs strand one still no score. All set for the start of the inning and that'll bring forth the veteran outfielder Ryan Braun. One one heading out towards shallow right. Therefore, it is Hayward now one away. Batting fifth, the first baseman number twelve, Justin Smoke. Next for Milwaukee, Justin Smoke. As the switch hitter will take his cuts left-handed here. It's very difficult being a switch hitter, and very rarely do you see the same hitter from both sides of the plate. He's a far superior hitter from the left side as opposed to the right side. And set up behind the dish is Clyde Washington as you see the rest of our umpiring crew there. Yeah, Matty, Clyde's my type of umpire. I didn't mind the low strike zone, and that's exactly what he has. If you're not going to give him above the belt, I'm okay with it. You know, one of the things I guess with Clyde is he is a real good low strike umpire. Pitchers seem to like him more than hitters, but one thing I will say, he has a very consistent zone. It's a low zone, but a consistent zone. And the good fastball there finds the zone as the count goes full now. Three and two. Payoff pitch home. Swing and oh my. Hit him with the hind into the bleachers and gone. A solo shot here off the bat of Justin Smoke. As the Brewers get on the board first, it's one to nothing. Man, that swing right there, Dan, that had to feel good. You're facing an elite starter. You don't know if you're even going to get wood on the baseball today. You know, and that'll rattle you a little bit. This guy's been throwing the ball great, one of the top pitchers in the game. He's not used to guys barreling him up and hitting him in the seats. To the plate now, Omar Narvaez. Can't keep the weight back, and he falls behind one and two. The count is two and two to the Brewers catcher. Two and two. And this ball is popped up, drifting back behind the mound. And the off balance throw beats him at first, and that's a tough play. Next to bat Orlando Garcia. He'll work on keeping this top of the second alive.
He set and the 2 1 pitch. And he's way off balance with the swing there. Bases are empty here with two men out. And that misses there, so he runs the count full now. Pretty easy pitch to lay off there, two and two. Not even close to being in the strike zone. He made it easy for the hitter in that one. Fouled away. Payoff pitch one more time. Popped him up. Rizzo has room in foul territory. He makes the play, and that'll end the inning. But the Brewers are on the board first thanks to this solo home run. On to the bottom of inning number two. It's now 1 0 Milwaukee. Last half of the second set to go, and Wilson Contreras digs in at the plate. Now the 2 1. Is swung on and missed, and that's strike two. Still even at two and two. Now here's the pitch. Swing and a miss as he ran the fastball right by him for the first down. Talk about blowing it by a guy. Geez, I mean, that fastball was way behind him when the swing came through the zone. I have to think he was looking for something off speed, and he just couldn't pull the trigger on that fastball. In now, Jason Hayward. And they'll go off speed here as this pitch misses. It's two and one. Yanked on the ground down the line. But this will wind up a foul ball. Two and two. And now pitch on the way. Fastball well outside. Neither guy willing to give in. And the at-bat will continue. Seventh pitch of the at-bat coming up. Right side and right into the shift. And the throw won't be in time as he'll be able to beat out the recovery throw at first. Hey, that's great hustle right there out of the box. Not everybody's getting it right out of the shoot from step one, but I have to ask you, Dan, how frustrating executing a pitch and there's an infield knock. It is, D-Roy, and you can read that right off the bat as a pitcher. You can read the angle. You know that that ball is going to be hit on the ground, and you're thinking deep down inside, okay, there's a quick out, and it just wasn't meant to be. Swing and a deep drive to left. Braun looking up. See you later. Over the wall, a home run. It's a two-run shot to straight away left, and the Cubs move out ahead two to one. That's one of those pitches you wish you could take back as soon as it leaves your hand. But guess what? There are no delete or rewind buttons in baseball. That's a mistake, and it was a good job by his opponent to make him pay for it. So the bases are clear now following the home run. And that'll give way to the veteran second baseman, Jason Kipnis. One one. Misses ball two. Oh, and he can't catch up to the fastball as he swings and misses for the second out. It's never easy to rebound after serving up a two run shot, but. That at bat was a good indication to me that he isn't letting it get to him. He went right after him for the strikeout. Standing in now, Hugh Darvish. 
Cubs pitcher at the plate trailing with a one and two count. Hey, this guy obviously feels he can move traffic right here. He's taking two big swings. He's trying to help himself. Hit out towards second. And the pitcher's got himself a base hit. And time will be called here as the pitching coach heads out to the mound and hopefully try and settle this guy down a bit. Here's Chris Bryant now. A runner on first with two away. And he takes one off the inside corner for ball two. Pretty good pitch right there. Fastball in off the plate. One of the things you want to do as a pitcher, try to stand those hitters up. Bryant looking at a three and one count. This is where you cash your checks right here. Three one. You're one of the best hitters in the game. You live for situations like this. Hitters count all the way. Here it comes. This one's down to third. On to second for the force out, and the side is retired. The sights and sounds of a day at the ballpark. Oh, my goodness. The three of us are back after this message and a word from our local stations. Next to hit will be the pitcher, Brandon Woodruff, as we are all set to begin the third inning in this one. One one. Pulled high in the air out to right field. On the move is Hayward. He's there and records the first down. The third baseman, number Here's seven. Eric Sogard. So Eric. far, 0 for 1 with a fly out. Wisely lays off the cut fastball there. It's two and one. Brown ball left side. A dive and he knocks it down. Throw will not be in time at first. A good effort that time, but not enough to prevent them from getting a one out base runner. The center fielder, Lorenzo King. Into the box now, Lorenzo Kane. Good curveball there. Clip the outside black for a called strike. Hey, that's a great job by the pitcher right there. Stealing a strike with that get me over breaking ball. And now he can get a little nastier with it in the dirt. The one and two pitch. And now here's a ball hit pretty well out toward right center field. Half a range to his left and put it away. Two down. So a runner at first with two away. And up next, the sweet swing and left-handed hitting outfielder Christian Yelich. He's set and the 2-1 pitch. It looked like the fastball got away from him there. Well, this has been a long inning already, and I know he doesn't want it to get any longer. I expect a challenge pitch right here. Ready on three and one. Here it comes. He pulls this one into right. And that's going to get down in front of Hayward for a base hit. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard come now. Back. Hey, the listen, as a pitcher, when you fall behind yeah, with yeah. three balls, you want to come in here and throw a strike, and sometimes you're going to give up a base hit. Yeah, Danny, that's the name of the game from the offensive standpoint. Work yourself, count leverage, man. 2-0, 3-0, 3-1. Buy yourself that pot-committed fastball and cheat. Oh. 
up high. Two and one now. Has to be a challenge pitch coming up here. He probably doesn't want to flirt with loading the bases. The two one pitch. Hey. So far in this game he's the only guy in the lineup that's gone down on strikes. This is the only guy in the lineup that struck out so far and now he finds himself in the hole with two strikes. Two two pitch is fouled away. A two to one score here as we play inning number three. Right side but it's going to be a foul ball. The 2-2. Two -two. Hit hard on the ground towards second. Kipnis is there. On to first, and the Brewers are turned away as the inning is over. The Brewers strand a couple. Our score remains 2-1. to one. Back here with Mark DeRozo and Dan Plezak, Matt Vaskersian, as the left-handed hitting power threat Anthony Rizzo starts out the inning. Two balls and a strike. Two balls, one strike. Three balls and a strike to the Chicago leadoff hitter. Javier Baez will be next. The 3-1. Swing and a liner toward the gap in left center. But this will be pulled in out there in left center. Well hit, but a rough out number one. Now back. The shortstop. Javier. Baez. And that brings up Javi Baez. 0 for 1 here in the early going. One out, nobody on. Skied into straightaway right. Yelich on the move. He tracks it down and makes the play to record the second out. Now back. So two are gone now in the Cubs half of the third. And next it'll be the left-handed power threat Kyle Schwarber. Now the one and one pitch is looked at for ball number two. Two out nobody on. And a swing and a miss as that looked like self-defense there. It's two and two. Not much you could do with that one. Tied him up in knots. Swing and a miss, and that ends the inning. Cubs are down in order. They lead it two to one. Welcome back to the north side of Chicago. Back here at Wrigley Field as we check in with Heidi. Well, Matt, during the break, I caught up with Craig Council, the Brewers skipper, about his lineup's performance so far. And flat out, he was very pleased with the quality of their at-bats. Yes, they've only scored one run, but he said they've done a great job of forcing the pitch count up, and he thinks that's going to lead to more offense for them as this game goes on. All right, Heidi, thank you. New inning set to get underway, and standing in is the veteran outfielder, Ryan Braun. the one and one pitch on the ground to third oh, a diving effort as it's off his glove and a good try to recover that time but he'll beat it out as he's aboard to kick off the inning the first base is number 12 just in stepping in now Justin smoke and the third baseman will have a look at it, but this is back into the seats. Again, a 1-2. Swing and a soft liner, but this is pulled in by the shortstop. 
now back. Digging in now for the Brewers, Omar Narvaez. Fourth inning of a two to one ball game. Cut fastball and there's strike two. Hey, he's got great feel for that pitch right there. He can throw it anytime he wants for a strike. Line towards center field. Half is there to put it away, and the runner will be forced to retreat back to first. Now batting the shortstop, Orlando Arcia. Coming to the plate now, Orlando Arcia, 0 for 1 after a pop out in foul territory his first time through. Yeah, this one's going to upset him for a little bit. You make the pitcher work the way he did right there, and that's the end result. That one sticks with you for a while. Now, ball and two strikes now. Hangs on him a bit that time as it's belted out toward deep center field. And that one is gone! Two run shot to straight away center, and the Brewers move out in front now, three to two. There's still some game left to be played, but that one swing could end up being a deciding factor in this one. Into the box, Brandon Woodruff. One and two to the Brewers pitcher. Not much you're going to do with that pitch right there. You have to catch it out front before it even breaks, and even if you do that, it's a tough pitch to keep fair. Three runs, five hits, and no errors on the Milwaukee line score so far. Still one and two. to two balls and two strikes now. And he gets him to pop it up on the right side of the infield. And Kipnis will put this one away, and that ends the inning. But the Brewers do get two on this two-run home run. Bottom of the fourth coming up, and Milwaukee's taking a 3-2 lead. Just about set to go for the last of the fourth. But before we do that, here's Heidi Watney. Thanks, Matt. In between innings, I was able to catch up with the manager of the Cubs to discuss his thoughts on his lineup so far. And overall, he's really happy with the at-bats they're putting together. It's still pretty early in the game, but they've seen a lot of pitches already. And he thinks the two runs they've pushed across so far is just the beginning, given the quality of the at-bats they're putting together. Okay, thank you, Heidi. Ready to go in the bottom of the fourth. And next will be the power hitting catcher, Wilson Contreras. Swing, and there it goes. He got all of that ball. And bye-bye, that one's gone into the bleachers. A solo shot that time for Wilson Contreras. And the Cubs have come back to tie it at three. Well, if you're going to give up a towering blast to one of the best players in their lineup, it's better to do it with no one on base. It stings, sure, but a solo shot isn't going to be the deciding factor in a game. to the plate now Jason Hayward still a ball and two strikes three runs four hits no errors so far for the Cubbies and right into the shift but this is a foul ball as the count holds steady at one and two now here it comes 
Base hit, line drive into the corner. On to second goes Hayward. And now it'll kick around in the corner. And he'll pull into second here with nobody out. Well, fans love a lot of offense, and that's what they're getting here, Dan. You said it, Manny. That's 10 hits in this game between the two teams already. Got to tell you, as a pitcher, this is a little painful for me to watch. So now to the plate, Ian Happ. No contact there, and it's one and two. Threw that fastball right by him. He had no chance to get the barrel to that one. Sent on the ground out to second. He's right there, and that's the first out. And is the second baseman, Jason Kipnis. He was a strikeout victim in his first try. And he can't allow the same thing to happen in this situation. This is a big-time spot in this game. He's got to find a way to put the ball in play. 1-1. Taken. Strike two. This is a situation where the offensive player just needs to do his job. Take inventory. Infield back. Get you a ground ball somewhere in the infield, preferably off the corners, and get your team to lead. Looked like the fastball got away from him there. It's ball two. Props to the hitter right there for laying off with a guy on third. You want to be aggressive, but you have to get a pitch you can drive. Count remains two and two. Hoping to send him packing. Pitch on its way. Fastball is outside, and it's full now. Three and two. Popped him up. Navarez is under it. And that's the second out of the inning. So in now for Chicago, you Darvish, one for one after a single this first time up. Hits are even right now at five aside. Line to the right side, but foul. Here's the one two and here's a ball lifted back toward the stands in right so we'll try it again at one and two one and two here it is and he got him minimizing the damage at just a run the inning is over but the Cubs draw even thanks to this solo home run we played four and we are all tied at three apiece. Ready to go in the top of the fifth. And set to go is the third baseman, Eric Sogard. This is pulled into right. Hayward is there, one away. Good contact to start out the inning. Thought he might be on base with some sort of a hit, but it hung up there too long. Just unlucky that time. So the bases are empty with one man gone. And that'll bring up Lorenzo Cain. Down the third baseline. Bryant is up with it. Throw not in time as he's able to leg it out. Hey, I understand it's a tough backhand play right there, but he who hesitates is lost. You could tell him fishing in the glove a little bit too long, and it cost him on getting the out right there. Darvish a check on first, and he's back standing. And again a throw and a dive but he's back in there. Three three our score with a man on at first and one away. Once more a throw over and he'll get back in safely. Standing in now Christian Yelich and he misses two and one. 
Hasn't seen a heater yet in this at bat. One might be coming right here. And he connects with it. This one's hit deep out to left center field. And that'll get down out there for extra bases. And they'll have runners at second and third following the one out double. And I think that may have been a situation where the runner on first was waiting to see if the ball was going to get down or not. If there were two outs, he most likely scores there. Instead, he has to hold it third. Can't really fault him for that, though. It looks as though the decision makers in the dugout will give him a free pass to first so the bases are loaded here on the intentional walk and the force play is now in order. That's what's called getting the treatment. Everyone knows he's a power threat with the bat so it's all about not letting him be the guy that beats you. Here's a ball in the air now carrying a bit out toward right center. The catch is made deep in the alley and here comes the runner from third. Now the relay home and the go ahead runs in to score on the sack fly as this is now a four to three ball game. Obviously he's now hoping for more up there with the bases loaded but you can't be too upset with the sack fly. So two on with two away and in next the switch hitting power bat of Justin Smoke. And he fouls this one off. Looking to keep this a one run game the pitch and it's fouled away. Two down, runners at first and second. And the cutter got him swinging. Strike three, and the side is retired. Two hits lead to a run here for Milwaukee. Home half of the fifth coming up. It's the Brewers four and the Cubbies three. Set now for the bottom of the fifth, and next will be the imposing power bat, Chris Bryant. This guy has been unbelievable. There were billboards outside Wrigley while he was still in AAA, and what does he do when he shows up? Rookie of the year, MVP. I mean, get in line. And the throw to first is in time, one gone. So one gone in the inning, and that'll bring up the first baseman, Anthony Rizzo. The one two pulled toward right center field Kane is under it and he brings it in for the second out of the inning. So bases are empty here with two gone and with it comes Javi Baez to the plate. We're in the fifth inning of a four to three ball game here. Oh they have him looking awfully confused up there right now it's one and two. Real ugly 0-1 swing there. As a pitcher, you've got to be hunting for the strikeout knowing you have this guy way off balance. And they'll try to get him fishing there, but he won't offer in the dirt, and it's back to even at 2-2. Two two. Interesting sequence of pitches right there. A real ugly swing on a ball away, and it looks like the batter has a much better idea of what he's looking for after that second pitch. And that's in for a base hit. Make it a 1-3 for three game so far. Kind of looked like he had gotten his bearings there. Dan was going to have a 1 2 3 inning, but not the case given up that late two out knock. Boy, this lineup is so deep. One through nine, they could put a hurting on you, and they're making him work, and he's given up a lot of base hits so far in this one. So far, this has not been an easy one for this pitcher. The 3 1. Grounder hit hard down the first baseline. 
But this will wind up foul as he runs the count full now. Good spot for an RBI. Put the ball in play with the runner in motion. He could score all the way from first. Again, another foul ball. There's a swing and a drive hit well out to right field. And that's going to be off the ivy covered wall. And the tying run is in to score all the way from first. It's a 4 4 game. Yeah, it's always nice to get a run right back after you've given one up to the guys in the other dugout. So he squares this thing up really well to drive it a run and ties us up at one. Here comes the Milwaukee skipper up out of the dugout on his way to the mound. And he's going to motion for the bullpen as that'll be all for his starter this afternoon. So he'll depart in the fifth with the go ahead run on base. Didn't work the required five for the win, but he could still be hung for the loss should that run come around to score. Aaron Wilkerson, a right handed reliever standing 6 3, gets the ball now out of the bullpen. Aaron Wilkerson. At the plate now, Wilson Contreras lays off the slider that time, two and one. Hits are even at seven apiece. Two and two to the Cubs catcher. Fastball swung on and missed, and for the second time today, he's gone on strikes. Cubs pick up a run on the RBI double. We're through five here this afternoon. All even now at four apiece. Alec Mills takes over to start the sixth inning on the mound. Top half of the sixth about to get started. And next to hit is the catcher, Omar Narvaez. Now the one and one pitch. Lifted in the air out to left field. Schwarber comes in a few steps as he hauls it in for the first out. The bat. Ready for another chance. Orlando Arcia. He went deep for a two run homer in his previous at bat. Ready to deliver the full count pitch. And this is swung out and missed. So it's two up two down to start the sixth inning. Classic slider down and away for the strike out there. Not a whole lot to say about that pitch that hasn't been said a million times already. That's just a real tough pitch for a hitter to pick up out of a pitcher's hand so they end up chasing when they're in protect mode. Avisail Garcia will get the call to pinch hit here as we'll see what he can do with two out and the base is empty. Swing and a miss. Blew the fastball right by him and the inning is over. Gone in order of the Brewers. Through five and a half, we're tied at four. Your Alex Claudia please. enters to do the pitching now in the bottom of the sixth. Number 58, Alex Claudio. Ready to go for the last half of the inning and standing in the outfielder, Jason Hayward. Now the one and one pitch.
swing and a liner. And a base hit, so the leadoff man is on to begin the inning. Hey, another leadoff knock right there. This game has been full of offense, full of traffic on the base pass. Let's see who's going to get that big double in the gap to clear him. In now, Ian Happ. And a liner foul into the seats down the right side. Claudio is adjusting to the new normal as MLB now mandates that relievers reach the end or face three or more batters before being replaced. And for a one-time lefty specialist like this, that's a big change. So it's a backwards K on the changeup that time. Ian Happ becomes the first out in the bottom of the sixth inning. Into the box now, Jason Kipnis. Too much dip on the sinker, laid off for a ball. Action now in the Milwaukee bullpen as they'll have a right-hander loosen up. 4-4 four, four is our score as we play the sixth. And a change up here, but that's taken low in the dirt for a ball. No reason to sit on anything other than hard stuff in a location you like and drive it right now. Hit back toward the mound. And that's through for his first base hit in this one. Hey, you know what? Right there, he executed a pitch. He can't worry about where it's going. He just wants to put it on the ground right there, give his defense a chance to work. And it, it, it found the hole, period. Victor Caratini will grab a bat and hit for the pitcher here. Number seven, Victor Caratini. Down low, two balls and a strike. And it's two balls and two strikes now. Great pitch in that situation. If he makes contact on that one, more than likely he's hitting into a double play. The 2-2. Two -two. On its Taylor made to short, six. Four, three. It's a double play, and the inning is over. One left for the Cubs. Six innings are in the books, all square, four to four. Ryan Tapera is on to pitch from the bullpen now to start inning number seven. Number 52, Ryan. Seventh inning ready to roll, and that'll bring in utility man extraordinaire Eric Sogard. The 1 1 home. back up the middle and the throw to first is in time so the leadoff man is gone here to start inning number seven one away for the Brewers in their half of the seventh and that'll bring up the center fielder Lorenzo Kane. the one one home is taken for ball two Cubs have someone working in their bullpen now as a right hander has begun to get loose. Two balls and a strike. Here it comes. Strike taken as that one crosses over the inside part of the plate. Two balls, two strikes, a crucial count for both pitcher and hitter. So, Dan, what was your approach on the mound in that count? Do you still pitch for the strikeout here? Action pitch right here, 2-2. Two, two. last thing you want to do is to fall behind the count, 3-2. And he'll step on first for the out, three unassisted. 
Now digging in to try it again. Christian Yelich. He'll try to follow up the double in his last at bat with another big hit right here. Well, he got a good pitch to hit last time up. Looked for it up in the zone and didn't miss it. Those are the pitches you only get maybe once an A.B., maybe once a game, maybe once a week. So he certainly capitalized on it last time. Now the 2-1 pitch. Big swing, but a little dribbler here to the right side of the mound. On to first, and this will remain a tie ball game as the inning is over. Three up, three down for Milwaukee. Score remains tied at four. Corbin Burns gets the call from the pen to take over on the mound and start the home seventh. Corbin Burns. Last half of the seventh here, and digging in is the big time power threat, Chris Bryant. Oh, had him off stride that time, and it's one and two. Now here it comes. That was a tempting pitch to swing at right there. A big power guy like this really wants something that he can elevate and drive out of the ballpark. A swing and a miss on a ball way out of the zone, and there's one away. I think he had his mind made up. He was swinging the bat and trying to protect before the ball even left the pitcher's hand. That pitch wasn't even close. He would have needed a flagpole to hit that one. Stepping in now, Anthony Rizzo. This is hit the other way out toward left field. Braun giving chase. In there, a base hit. The throw is wild, and it gets away. And he is in the second base with one away as the go-ahead run. Man, that swing looked like self-defense than a real quality swing. But hey, he muscled it out there, and it was enough to get him safely the second. Those are the kind of hits that will drive you nuts as a pitcher. Into the box, Javier Baez. Two balls and a strike to Javi Baez. Cubs shortstop with a three and one count. When you're playing close games like this, base runners mean everything, so he can ill afford to start giving away free passes. Into the corner and slicing foul. The 3-2 pitch. Good swing on a tough pitch, and he'll stick around to see another one. A swing and a liner to left center field, and that's going to drop in for a base hit. And the run is in to score from second. Dan, you'll take RBIs any way you can get them, but when they give your team the lead in the late innings, man, that feels good. Oh, it especially does, especially when you start to score runs late in the game off of quality pitching. When runs are at a premium, that's one that makes you feel really good about yourself. At the plate, Kyle Schwarber. He takes strike three called on the fastball. Couldn't pull the trigger, and there are two away. Some guys with big arms like this, they're just chuckers. They just throw the ball as hard as they can, and where it ends up isn't that big of a concern, but that wasn't the case there. That was a very well-pitched fastball right on the corner at the knees. Good luck hitting that one. Standing in now, Wilson Contreras. Swing and a ball hit out toward right center. Kane is going to have room out there as he puts this away to retire the side. Two hits in the inning lead to a run for Chicago. We'll look ahead to inning number eight now. It's the Cubs five and the Brewers four. Wait, Rowan Jeff. Wick has been Your summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so now to start the eight. Chicago Cubs. 
number 50. And that'll bring up Keston Hura. This thing's far from over, even though we're moving into the back end of this game. Only down by one. All they need to do is get this leadoff guy, and they're an extra base hit away from tying this thing up. Swings through it for strike number two. Now action in the bullpen as their closer starts to get loose out there. Skied into straightaway right. On the move is Hayward. He makes the catch. A great effort to get there and record the first out of the inning. Here's Ryan Braun now. Here now the 2-2. Two -two is taken three. ball three. Three two pitch. He swung on and missed strike three. A lot of indecision there on that check swing and that's something you see quite a lot on three and two. When the difference between striking out and drawing a walk and can be an inch or two it's pretty understandable why guys aren't always aggressive with their swings. No offer on that one two balls and a strike. Now the 2-1 pitch is swung on and missed for strike number two. Got him swinging as he runs the fastball by him to end the inning. Gone in order of the Brewers. And the deficit holds at 5-4. Brent Suter is on to pitch out of the now, bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. Number 35, Brent Suter. Here's Jason Hayward now. He steps in off a base hit in his last at bat. Breaking ball that time that misses out of the zone. Two balls and a strike. Here it comes. Ah, his eyes lit up on that one above the zone, but he comes up empty. High in the air down the right field line. And foul. The bouncer to the left side. And they'll have no play as he reaches first base safely. You know, D. Rowe, when he no, makes a phone good. call after the game, he call his parents and say, hey, he had a four-hit day. You think he's going to tell them about that infield single right there? Oh, no, that was a line drive in the gap. We always used to say on the bench, Dan, anybody could get three hits in a big league game got to get that fourth one that's what separates you those are the special moments scooped up one there the smoke at first and they get them both now back second baseman Jason digging in now Jason Kipnis he's working on a one for three thus far the ground and right at the shifted infielders. 
field it cleanly throw on to smoke at first and the side is retired Cubs are down quietly they lead it five to four now the skipper's on his way out toward the home plate area and I believe that means we're going to have a double switch here. Greg Kimbrell comes on from the pen, hoping to finish this one off here in the top of the ninth. And batting in the eighth spot, number 46, Greg Kimbrell. Now playing second and batting ninth. Omar Narvaez will be charged with trying to start a rally in the ninth as they go to work against Kimbrell. three and one pitch too close for comfort and he did a good job just to make contact now here it comes high in the air and deep to left center field and he's going to have room to put this one away and that's the first out in now Orlando Garcia he's got a hit in three at bats to this point one run game here in the top of the ninth. Lifted into the air out towards center field. Half is there, two gone. Brooke Holt will pinch hit here, and he's the potential tying run. Out of play off to the right. Crowd of over 39,000 on their feet. Fouled off. The Brewers down to their final strike. And he tried to hold up that time. We'll get an appeal down to third, and no swing. It's ball three. Ground ball sent back up the middle. Throw in time, and the ball game is over. Just more of the same from Craig Kimball. He comes out of the bullpen and fires a scoreless ninth inning to pick up the save. Business as usual from one of the best in the game. A one run finish today, five to four, the final score. The Chicago Cubs jumped ahead in the seventh inning and never gave the lead back. Ryan Tapera is the winning pitcher of record. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa, Dan Pleszak, Heidi Watney, and our entire crew. I'm Matt Vasquez, and you've been watching MLB The Show. For more, make your way over to theshownation.com. Here now is our final line score this afternoon. First for the victorious Chicago Cubs. Five runs, 12 hits, no errors. They left seven men on base.